Hi guys, welcome to day five, and we're going to start off by looking at area and moving on in this video to prisms as well. So here is a circle, and you have to remember this formula, but the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. Now in a question, they might give you the radius, which is very handy if they do, because in this case it's six, that being the center. So it's simply pi times six squared, which is the same as pi times 36, and because I don't currently have a calculator, and in non-calculator exams, they could ask you to leave your answer in terms of pi, which means just basically write how many pi's there would be. So there we have it, 36 pi centimeters squared. Now that's for the area. Because this is a circle, I'm also going to do circumference, and it's a different formula. Very easy to remember, because one has radius, one has diameter, but the radius one has the squared an area is always in squared because we're looking at two-dimensional shape, or well, the properties of a two-dimensional shape, the, the space it takes up. So, dead easy. Um, apple for area, apple pies, no, sorry, circumference, so cherry pies are delicious, apple pies are too, is another way people remember that. So, in this case, we don't have the diameter, but we can work it out, because you should know a diameter is two radii two radiuses basically. So that's going to be 12, so the circumference would be 12 pi. Now in the A to A star one I talk about sectors and segments, so that's where it goes on, but this is only to get a B. So, And that would be centimeters because we're looking at a one-dimensional length. So let's move on to the triangles. So triangle, you will be given this as your, actually I don't think you are anymore, but just in case, that is the formula, half the base times the height. Or some people prefer it written like this, base times height halved. So the base is quite obvious, that's going to be 8. But what is the height? They can add this in to confuse you, but this is the slanted length here. The height, if you imagine you measure your height, you stand up at straight at right angles to the ground. So the height is always a perpendicular height. So 8, 6 is a 48, halved would be 24. Now, if you chop off the top of a triangle, you get this shape, which is called a trapezium. Now, because it hasn't, it's got this extra top, we have to include that into our formula. So let's have a look at this bit here. So we've got base times height, and that's being halved. But when we cut off the top, we add it in. So originally, mathematicians said, well, if this is B and this is the H, what could we give this label? And they just came up with A because it's next to the alphabet. So because we've added in this side, we're literally going to add it in to the triangle, of, triangle formula. So a triangle with an extra side is a trapezium. When you add in that extra side, you must add it into your formula. Dead easy to remember. So the area of a trapezium is the A plus the B times the height halved looks a little bit like a roof of a house. Some people remember attic, because it's the top of the house, and the basement, if you're lucky enough to have one of those, at the bottom of your house. So 4 plus 10 times 6, half. 14 times 6 is 84, half is 42. So you can do a little bit more working in there. That's it. And now this is the easiest one in the world. I'm not even going to go over this one. I'm just going to write it down. So length times width, 7 times 5, 35. But the reason I'm doing it is because this is a parallelogram. It's this pushed over. So it's still going to be the same formula. So it's length times, and sometimes we call it base times height. So I'm going to just put that in there. So it's the base times the height, just like the triangle. So it's still 7 times 5, and that's still going to be 35. Just this is not a height, this is a length of a side. It's always the base times the height. Now, if we take these shapes, we can make them three dimensional and turn them into what we call a prism. So, a prism is basically a shape that has a cross section, which means that front shape is repeated all the way through. That shape goes all the way back. Just like this one, it's exactly the same at the end, it goes all the way back. This trapezium is repeated all the way back, and this square here. So we call these shaded sections a cross section, or cross-sectional area. So 
When it's three-dimensional, we're most interested in the volume of these shapes. And you are told on your formula sheet that the volume is the area of the cross-section times the length of the prism. So because I've already worked out the area of this one, I'm just going to use that. So that was 36 pi. And we're times in it by the length of this prism. In this case, you can see it is 10. Sorry, if I went a bit too fast, this was the calculation. It's exactly the same circle from the first question we did. So 10 of those is 360 pi. And it's three-dimensional now, so it's centimeters cubed. Again, if you had a calculator, you just use the pi button. Okay, so triangle. And again, I've used the same triangle. So it's the area times the length. The area of this triangle, we've just worked it out, is 24. And we're now going to times that by the length of this prism. So you've got to do 24 times 5, which is 120. So volume's really easy, as long as you're good at your areas. Now, if we take a prism, though, and don't ask you the volume, we can also ask you the surface area. Now, this is... Pretty simple, but just far longer. So surface area means the area of every single surface. So that's the bottom, the top, the front and the back, and the two sides. So you should be able to see here, this is the front and the back. So 5 times 3 is 15, but there's another 15, so that is a total of 30. I'm going to underline that one. If we do the sides, I'm just going to do that to show the sides. If this is 4, you have to look around and think about how high this is. So this is also 3. So the two sides. So 2, I'm just going to write sides. 4 times 3 is 12. And another one of those, that would be 24. And if we do the top and the bottom, I'm going to write bottom because I've already written back there. So it looks a bit weird. So the top is 5 times 4, so that's 20, plus another 20, and that is 40. If you add these up, we get 94. Now, yes, this is a three-dimensional shape, but we're only looking at the surfaces, so that's still the area of those, and it does say area there, and it will do in the question, so area is always two-dimensional. Now, I'm a bit conscious how, this, how long this video is, but I'm going to have to just go through it. So here, <coughs> I'm just going to explain how to do this one. So you've got three rectangles, but you've also got this. So you've got to find the area of the two triangles. And you've also got to find the area of these three rectangles and add those together. So that's quite simple. They can mix these que this question up with a bit of Pythagoras theorem as well. If you find the height, they might give you this and this. So you might need to watch the Pythagoras video if you're getting stuck on some of the surface area questions. Now, I will explain this one, because it's quite difficult. Let's just put a 10 on there, because 10 nice. So this, again, is the same circle from before. But you should be able to see there are two circles, and then we have this curved surface going around the cylinder. Now, if you get your piece of paper, and I'm just going to show on a really small scale, but you roll it to make a circle... See if you can see this? Yeah, you can just about see it. This length all the way around here, if I open it up, is the length of the paper. So, this is basically a rectangle that's been folded around. Now, when you unfold this, like I said, you get a rectangle, but this length here is the length of your entire rectangle. So, to find out this length, you should know that's called circumference. So that's pi times the diameter, which is 12. And that's the calculation we did earlier in the video. And we can see that this length here is 10. So pi times 12 is 12 pi's, times 10, that's, well, 120 pi. The two circles, we worked out one of the circles earlier on to be 36 pi, So this one and this one, with two of those, so that would be 72 pi. Now, if we combine these two, we get 192 pi centimetres squared. 
So you do often like leaving it in pi. I prefer it because I don't need a calculator to do it. But if you did have it in a calculator question, you just press the pi button now and you're done. So this is quite tricky, but you just think about unraveling it. It is a rectangle rolled up. And that's, that's a good grade B question there, guys.